I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. Go for a drive. Two thousand eighteen Porsche Carrera T PDK. Two thousand eighteen Porsche Carrera T manual. Yes, we have two of them. We're gonna address the similarities and the differences between them. So Carrera T, what does T mean? T is for touring. So this is Porsche's touring model, which means it's a purist model. It's a throwback to their original one, which was also a purist model. Nice throwback. So it's basically for the guy that wants to slay back roads on weekends, but also be able to daily it. Yeah, the Carrera T gets a lot of cool stuff that you only get in GT cars. You don't get in regular 911s. Exactly, so that's what makes this one really special. So if you're wondering why I've got cooler looking seats than Jacob does, now you know why. We'll get to those differences later, but that is one of them. We both have lightweight glass, so if you look at the rear defroster, there is none. It's just right through the glass, no defroster lines on both of them. The side windows are also the same, and we also have door straps. So that's part of the lightweightness that you can't get on regular models. I think that's so cool. It's inconvenient, and people may accidentally use it as a grab handle and open the door, but nobody's done that so far. And your pullout straps are way cooler because they're yellow, they match your seatbelts. Yeah, so part of this review is also gonna show you how differently you can option the exact same car. Hey, Yuri. Yes? I'd like to address something right off the bat. The exhaust sound, do you hear that? Oh yeah, I hear it. That's because we have less sound insulation because it's the Carrera T, but there's also another reason, Yuri. It's because you get more pops and bangs in sport mode, not sport plus or normal. Yeah, and how do we find that out? We went to page 106 in our Porsche instruction manual. Naturally, what we do in every car is we turn it on and we go straight to sport plus mode and we basically live in sport plus for the whole week. Because the fastest mode is always the best mode. Exactly, but we were kind of wondering why the exhaust was muted. So then Yuri looked in the manual, found that backfires were enabled in sport only, not in sport plus. <laughs> Why? Why would I ever do that? It's probably because Sport is for spirited driving on daily roads where Sport Plus is for racing and they want you to have a little bit more fun on daily drives. And on the racetrack, those crackles and pops probably slow you down a bit when it comes to exhaust airflow. Well, if I think about it now, that's actually pretty logical. But still, I want it in Sport Plus mode. So I set mine up in individual and put everything to Sport Plus except for the engine. I like the engine in Sport Plus, but then it also enables rev matching. So there's something else that's a little weird. My car automatically rev matches because it's an automatic PDK, but there's only two pedals, it's an automatic. Mine actually does rev match in Sport and Sport Plus. However, you can't manually turn it off. You can only have it off in normal or individual. And by the way, normal is represented by an O for some reason, whereas all the other ones are represented by the first letter of that name. Yeah, see, but the car always starts to on. Just whatever, man, whatever. It's just a little odd. Anyways, I just wish there was a button to turn rev matching on or off while having everything else in Sport Plus or Sport Mode. You know what does do that? What? The Veloster N. Yes, it does. There is a rev match button on the steering wheel. That would be such a nice, simple solution for this. Enough talking about exhaust. Let's making exhaust. Are we doing this because we're adult children? Yeah, that's why whenever we get two of the same cars, we need to drive next to each other and crackle and pop. We are definitely squad goals in both of these cars. Okay, but this car not only crackles and pops for fun, it's so loud and so good sounding. The exhaust sound is not my favorite. However, what I do enjoy is that I hear turbo spool and it actually rewards you for ringing it out all the way to 7,500 RPM and it actually sounds really good up in that limit. To me, the exhaust sounds more sincere. It's not as fake. Exactly, it sounds very natural, very real. It's not simulated and if it is, it really doesn't sound like it. I really don't think it is though. And you can hear it from so far away. When you're ripping around in the yellow Porsche, I, from like the distance I could hear it. And we both actually do have the sport exhaust because the Carrera T comes with that. So we have a button for the exhaust. And we also have the sport exhaust tips, so you get black painted tips, which look pretty nice. Horsepower and torque. 370 horsepower and 331 pound-feet of torque for both of them. Stick shift doesn't lose anything for having a stick shift. Uh, it kind of does. There's some differences here and there. But, but the numbers. The numbers of the horsepower do not change. I believe the GT3 changes between stick shift and PDK. Because the manual transmission in the GT3 can't take that much torque. Still get a stick shift though. I really like this engine because I don't find that there's any turbo lag. At any RPM, it's ready to go. You have a flat torque curve from 1700 RPM. And since this is a 911, the engine's in the back. 
Yes, it is. It's a three liter twin turbo boxer six cylinder. Personally, I love engines in the back and frunks. I love a lot of things about them, especially the handling characteristics. I like putting stuff in the front and throwing people off. Oh yeah, that's always fun. You know what they call the frunk in Britain? The fruit for boot. Oh my God. <laughs> the front boot. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thanks to whoever commented that. That's insanely funny. Is that actually true though? Maybe they were messing with I don't you. know, man. They left a comment, but it makes sense. <laughs> they are both seven speeds, a PDK and a manual. The Carrera T gets an exclusive gear ratio, which shortens the gearing. And it actually makes it so fun in both of them, especially the manual, because the gear ratios are so close. You're always shifting. You're always in the power. Yeah, the PDK is really fun. Up is down, down is up for shifting on the stick on the right. So it's a lot of fun to do those Ken block shifts when you get pretty bored of just sitting in traffic with paddles or automatic. One thing that bothers me about the manual and I kind of get why they did it, the auto rev matching is not perfect. It's off by about 200 RPM every single time, but you feel the shift. So I think they actually did that on purpose because if they had it match perfectly, it would feel too automatic. Yeah, well this thing feels so hard on shifts in Sport Plus. But back to the manual, the rev match, I can actually rev match this better myself, but on a racetrack, I would definitely have Sport Plus turned on so I wouldn't have to do it just like we did on the racetrack when we took both of these. So speaking of that track day, we got to drive the Carreras on the track. So it's one of the few cars that we got to drive full out and then also drive it on the streets. Exactly, and it makes a huge difference because you know how it will handle at the limit and we also find out how it is on the roads today. At the limit, these cars are insane. So much grip, I can't even get this back end barely loose. I can, but that's only in PSM Sport, but we're not gonna do that because we wanna keep our licenses. Because these tires are super sticky, like this does not feel that rear wheel drive when you're driving like within the limits. And if you leave PSM on, which is your traction, you cannot get the back end out. It's really safe to drive on public roads if you're driving near the limit. Since this is a PDK, it has a zero to 60 time of four seconds. And the manual has a zero to 60 miles per hour of 4.3 seconds. And they were both really good on the track, but we were both slightly more engaged in the manual transmission one. We were definitely both more happy in a manual transmission. And I'm gonna say right now, get a manual transmission if you're getting one of these. I'm also gonna say that right now because this transmission is so damn good. It's actually amazing. It's so stiff. It works so well on the track. It works so well on the streets. The clutch engagement is perfect. There's no reason not to get it. Yo, you know what we should bring out of retirement right now? What? So good. Well, this is so damn good. But the PDK is also very good, but I wouldn't recommend it unless your daily commute has a ton of stop and go traffic. Yuri, I think we should address some more of the differences, but let's switch cars first. Let's switch cars out of my race seats into your comfortable seats. I'm actually gonna miss these seats, but I'm also gonna love those ones. Oh, yes, launch control. <laughs> yeah, the PDK is really good. A lot of people have never used a seven speed manual transmission. To get into seven, you need to be in at least fifth first to pop right into it. It's very weird. It's only adding one extra gear, but it feels like it's adding an extra whole row of them when you're downshifting. When I was downshifting, I popped it out of seventh, let go a little bit, and I knew if I pulled back, it would go into fourth, which was the middle one. Hey, Yuri. Yes? These are Porsches, right? Yes. Handling test, straight to cliche corner. Porsche squad, cliche corner, here we go. The car handles so flat. It's so good on cliche corner. It's not even fair how good these cars are. I pushed this one so hard and it had unlimited grip. We both have rear axle steering. You can't actually get it on the 911 base model. It's only on the T. The suspension is so good. It's actually adaptive. So depending on what mode you put it in, it firms up or tightens up. So there's actually a button that you can also control it manually, which is really nice to have. And the suspension's firmness is just perfect for regular roads as well as on the racetrack. Whatever they did, the damping, it's absolutely amazing. Oh yeah, it's like such a comfy drive all the time. Even the Sport and Sport Plus, it's still not overly firm. It's actually so perfect. This is definitely way more comfortable in these seats, but I wouldn't take them. I kind of slightly fit behind myself with my knees to the side. Jacob, your turn. No. I would also definitely take these less comfortable carbon buckets because they're carbon buckets from a GT. And you get a rear seat delete when you get the carbon buckets. You may have noticed all the stuff behind Yuri. Check this out. We've got a whole shipment of straight pipe shirts. Check out our merch store. So these seats are way easier to get in and out of. The carbon buckets, I found you can't really get in and out. <sighs> 
struggle's real. But wait, the only way is to maybe move the seat all the way back or rest your arm on there. It's really inconvenient. It is extremely inconvenient for daily driving, but I feel like you should suffer. Memory seats. You should suffer because these are available for this car. You definitely should suffer, and it's because you get to sit lower, you don't screw up your seating position because Porsche told you what to do and you listen to them, and it would be way better to have a stick shift with the carbon seats. Yeah, manual with the carbon seats, that would be the perfect spec. We'll get to how I would spec it later, but so far I would definitely check both of those boxes. I'm not crazy about the Carrera T decal on the bottom though. Did you know that you can get a zero dollar option to delete that? Oh, I know, you've been showing me all the options all day. Those little wiper nozzles in front of the headlights, you can actually spec those to be the color of the body of the car. How much? It's like five or 600 bucks. Worth it. <laughs> Is it though? <laughs> no. To continue on with the looks, I wanna talk about the headlights. Go for it. I don't like the current Porsche headlights. I don't like that four LED pattern for running lights. Yeah, you've said that before. Moving on, we do have two different lights. Not moving on, not moving on. You can put these to full headlight mode and run that all day. When you get out of your car and lock it, it'll automatically turn off. So I suggest that's the way to drive this car. But the Macan, you could go to off and the lights would be completely off in the front. I want that in this. Anyways, the yellow one has upgraded LEDs. Those are like two grand for those. The taillights are pretty cool, but they do have that four light pattern. It doesn't have a stripe that goes all the way across like some other 911s have. I think that's the cooler taillight pattern. And the yellow one actually has the optional tinted taillights as well. Do you like the spoilers? I don't like them. I think it's cool that they're motorized and they're there, but I would always leave it down unless you leave it in auto and it pops it up when you reach a certain speed. Yeah, I don't like when it pops up. I mean, it looks kind of cool. We can pop them up at the same time together when we're squatting around in our Porsches. I wish you could just force it down the whole time because it looks better. And while I'm looking at your car, I see these gigantic brakes. So the silver one that I'm in has gigantic carbon ceramic brakes for about $10,000. They look amazing. They stop the car like crazy. Not sure if they're worth $10,000, but there you go. They do stop the car like crazy, but look at my brakes. They're smaller, but when you look through, you can see all the control arms and everything through the rims. I really like the wheel design. They're actually straight from the Carrera S. Both of these have the same gray wheels. You get the wheels in gray, you get the side badge in gray, you get the mirrors in gray, and you get the badges at the back in gray. Black looks a lot better, but the GTS and the S get black, so they had to differentiate it with gray. I did want to point out a cool thing about the spoiler. When it's down, your third brake light is in your vents. When it goes up, the third brake light's on the spoiler. That is actually pretty cool. I'm sure it's there for legal reasons, but it's also there for cool reasons. Yeah, no, it's just cool when things change and things happen. I like that. And now for some interior stuff. So these interiors are really, really nice. I really like both of them. They're very different though. We've tested it before. We'll test it again. The visors. Yep, here we go. Don't get too excited. Three, I... two, one, nothing. Nothing. No. Doesn't matter, not really. I had low expectations for that. Next test, cup holder test. Small cup of coffee. We've got these super secret cup holders that pop out. It fits perfectly fine, but it hangs over your electronics. Too risky, I give it a fail. What it's hanging over is one of the funniest buttons that I've found. I mentioned that there's no rear defroster, but there's actually a button for it and it illuminates and it doesn't do anything. But what the cup holders do do perfectly is hold radios. Anytime you go to a Porsche driving school, they put the radios there. I think it was designed for radios more than cups. But it also still works, so maybe it's both. We've got the old Panamera style, Macan style, no gloss black buttons. I love them. There's a little gloss black ring around it. Whatever, don't care, love it. We have Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto. I used Apple CarPlay so much and it worked so well. I didn't use Android Auto because I don't care because I'm driving. Can't rewind satellite radios, but when using Sirius satellite radio, it doesn't show you what song you're on. You need to put that into your gauges in your right bubble. That's how you know what you're browsing through. Yeah, I don't care about the infotainment. Everything is well laid out. Don't mind it at all. We do have Sport Chrono in both of them though. It's kind of difficult to use the Chrono because you need to use the right ball through the menu and do it while driving. It's kind of tricky. But you know which one looks cooler? The one in the yellow one because it's yellow. Yeah, we don't have yellow gauges though like some of the 911s had on the track. But you can option that. You can literally option anything you want in a Porsche. Oh, I've got another infotainment thing to talk about that I've never talked about in any other car. Go for it. CD player. So we got Dance Mix 95 here. No, no, you got Dance Mix 95. At a garage sale for a dollar, best CD ever. If you know Dance Mix 95, all the songs transition without a pause. In this Porsche 911, 
transitions without a pause, the CD player gets a 10 out of 10. In the Legacy we reviewed, it stopped like two seconds between songs. I love the gauges. The gauges are actually perfect in both cars. They look amazing. Everything is crystal clear. The reason the gauges are the best is because that bright orange needle shows up perfectly in your peripheral vision while you're driving, so you don't need to double check. And the speedometer shows up perfectly. You always know what speed you're going. It's always in the same spot. It's never not there. It's the best. And the customizable gauge to the right is also amazing. There's so many different functions, G-forces, and I can see my turbo boost, so I'm good. The best part about G-forces is that you can have it show your maximum G-force. So all you need to do is reset it, smash on your brakes, and you can see how many Gs you got that time. And right in front of the gauges, we have our steering wheels. And the one in the silver one is Alcantara, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, the leather steering wheel in the yellow one isn't bad. Alcantara is much nicer. I like how it's all manual, very telescopic. I'd actually like to talk about steering input while we're talking about the wheel. You point it and it goes. This thing literally feels like it's on rails. Oh dude, go-kart mode for sure. Yeah, this is fast, expensive, kind of reasonably priced if you look at all the other Porsches, go-kart mode. And it's a Carrera T, which means it's cooler. I think it probably should have been a little bit lighter weight, but it's so special that you can't not get it. I think if you're getting a Carrera T, you need to get the race seats and a manual transmission. I completely agree. The only other option that I would take off is the Sport Chrono, just so you have that. How about the carbon ceramics? I don't think so. I think they're unnecessary. They look amazing, but the Carrera T, the yellow one, stops completely fine without them. And I think you should also option yellow paint, mandatory. And that's actually a free option, and I would 100% also get that one as well. This gray is an option for $900. Since we told you how we'd spec them, I think we should probably discuss the price at this point. Starts at 116,000 Canadian. But we are obviously not driving the base models. The yellow one is the cheaper one of the two. It's 132,000. The silver one is 143,000 Canadian. Compared to the other Porsches we've driven, do you think this is worth the price? I think so because it's so limited, it's gonna be a collector's item. If you spec it properly, which you should with a manual transmission and these carbon buckets. We had a chance to speak to the president of Porsche Canada about stick shifts and Porsches. Here's what he had to say. If let's say the 911 has a hybrid version or it starts to go that way, will there always be a purist model with a gas engine, rear wheel drive, rear engine, manual transmission? As long as we are allowed to do so, yes. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let us know how you like this comparison, if it helped. If you got a 911 Carrera T, did you get the carbon fiber race seats? Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, patreon.com, and that new little sponsor button beside the subscribe button. Hey, Porsche rims. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. We're going for a drive. Oh, I love this. So good. Thought we forgot the box test. Hey, is that Doc K's box? It is. Patreon. What's in the box? I told you. It's clothing. Oh, merch. Merch, 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 merch. Merch, merch, merch.